You know, before I begin, uh, I, I have to thank the leaders of, of this house. Mm. Pastor Torre. <laughs> Lady Sarah. A very, very special thank you from, from me and from all of us to you. Because of you, because of the both of you, One Church is now in a glorious phase of transition. Mm. I love it. The last time I was blessed enough to have the opportunity to do this, it was 2015. And all of you look so different. Some of you I have not seen before ever. And some of you who I've gotten the chance to see more recently, but yeah, that was a 2015 One Church. And there was a glory on that 2015 One Church. Come on, you were a part of it. But this 2016 One Church, this, this, this 2016 One Church is doing things. It was interesting, before, uh, the last time I did this, me and my beautiful wife were expecting. As you have <laughs> all experienced, it is an amazing thing to be expecting and have a, a worship warrior as a partner. Yeah. Tina Watkins Quay, please stand. Yeah, in 2015, we were expecting. And so in 2016, we're now living the birth, the realization of expectation. And it's a beautiful place to be in. You know, for the first time, my son is going to hear me preach. There he is right over there. chubby-cheeked fella. <laughs> but looking at him is one of the greatest blessings I have and will ever have in my life. Amen. Because every time I look at him, and you too, baby, but every time I look specifically at him, <laughs> I tell you it is the glory of the Lord over and over again. There really is just nothing like it. To think that God could create something so beautiful and so innocent and bless us to take care of him is just, it's an overwhelming and beautiful feeling. And I want to speak from that place because the word that has been buzzing in my spirit and in my mind is glory. Yes. Glory. Glory. You know, we spend a lot of time in life chasing numbers. We chase an accumulation of numbers. We chase numbers that we want to grow. We want our FICO scores to grow. Oh, somebody amen on that. <laughs> we want our bank accounts to grow. We want the, the acreage to grow. We want, our, we want all of these things in our lives to grow, 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 grow. And there are other numbers that we want to shrink, 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 shrink. But we spend a good portion of our lives chasing after things, chasing after accomplishments, chasing after uh, rungs on the ladder of success based on what society tells us is successful. What if we chased after the very thing that we had as we were worshiping? 
what if we chase the glory? The title for tonight's message is the glory, excuse me, his glory is on you. The beautiful part about worship and glory, it has this tremendous up and down dynamic that is so in alignment with how things work in the spirit realm. And I got the chance to be a part of it and observe it as you were just now. The worship goes up, the glory falls down. The worship goes up, the glory falls down. And I've been in situations where you will hear people who are a part of a worship experience and they say, oh man, the presence of the Lord was here. The glory just fell. I'm like, yes, it did. And since you were there, and since you were there, and since you were there, that means the glory fell on you. Isn't it interesting? We're very quick to announce the falling of the glory of God around us. But we don't spend nearly as much time as we need to observing how the falling of the glory of God is upon us and is within us. And so this is the place I want to speak to everyone from. I like to think tonight is a, an affirmation. For some, it will be a confirmation. And for some, it will be a large and wonderful discovery. But the glory is on you. And for grammaticians out there, I'm going to put the emphasis on a different word. Same sentence. But isn't it interesting? You change the emphasis on a word, and now I'm saying two different things. The first time I'm going to say the glory is on you. But also, the glory is on you. Mm, mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, the first time when I say the glory is on you, that is just the acknowledgement of the presence of the glory of God. Keep that. Hold on to that. That is yours. No one can take that from you. Now, the second time, when I say that the glory is on you, that means it is now on you to do something with it. You see, it's one thing to walk around with the glory, but it's another thing to do something with it. And a lot of times we think the thing that we need to do is to go, quote unquote, make things happen. The best thing you can do with the glory of the Lord on you and in you is continuously prepare yourself for what God has already done. That is how you walk in the glory of the Lord. He has already done it. It is preordained for you. Our responsibility with this glory that we carry is to continuously prepare our insides and our minds so that we can walk into what he's already given us. So this is how we chase glory. Instead of chasing after all of these other things, instead of chasing after all of these things that we can see and we can lay our hands on, when we talk about pursuing the glory of God, it's merely pursuing what it is we're supposed to do with the presence that we have upon us and in us that allows us to be a part of the full manifestation of what he's already done. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather chase that glory. I wanted to start in Psalms 8. I love this whole passage. Really, I love the whole Bible, but we'll start with this passage so that I can get you guys out before 2 a.m. Amen. (laughs) 2 a.m. was a joke. Stop it. So we start in Psalms 8 and 1. It says, O Lord, 
our Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set who have set your glory above the heavens. I love this because we start to lay out the supernatural order of how this works. God, who created the heavens and the earth and everything beneath it, sets his glory above the heavens. Now it's interesting because We'll see the word glory again in a couple of verses. This particular definition of the word of glory has in it grandeur, imposing in form and appearance. I love this last word, majesty. So as, as we're speaking of the Lord in this particular sense, we are talking about his majesty, his imposing form, the grandeur of God. That is set above in the heavens. Keep going. We'll go to verse 3, where he then, where then says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. Keep going. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? I want to look back on something very, very quickly. I want to zoom out. It says, when you consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, so we have the glory of God above the heavens, and then we have the heavens, and then we have the moon, and then we have the stars. Order. There's order to this. And what I love about this is it sets it all up so that then you know where we fit in in terms of that order. Now, when you look at this word mindful, love this. Mindful, the definition you see, it's to mark as so to be recognized or to be remembered. So think about this. God is in the business of creation. He's created heaven, the universe, the moon, the stars, things we could never create on our own. Here he is creating all of this, and yet in all of his splendor and grandeur, He's mindful of us. If you can create all of heaven, you know, can you imagine this? Listen, my, my child is three months old. When my child was born, I love all of you. But I forgot all of you. <laughs> my mind was on the child one creation, one thing in my life, focused on the child. Yet God has created heaven, moon, stars, all of these things, and he hasn't lost track of us. It's not only that we were on his mind, we were marked as to be recognized and to be remembered. Family, you are marked. You are marked by his glory. Permanently. Let that sink in. I dare you to walk into your next job uh, application or interview, your next audition, I dare you to walk into the room knowing that you are marked by the glory of God. And marked in such a way that no matter what happens in the heavens, in the moon, and the stars, God still says, you, I have something for you. I have plans for you plans to prosper you and not harm you. You. I have plans for you. You are marked. My glory is on you. I don't care if asteroids blow up or galaxies explode or planets. 
doesn't matter. None of those things can take my mind off you. No matter what is shifting in heaven, no matter how many times the angels in heaven cry, cry, holy, 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 I'm still like, that's, I love the whole, but you, my glory is on you. Family, to walk with that kind of presence, your everything should change. The way you talk changes. The way you walk changes. The way you think changes. And when all those things change, the way you be has to change. Can you imagine walking into every circumstance knowing that you are marked by the glory of God? When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, I'm sorry, I went back to uh, verse three. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, we can keep going. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Keep going. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with and honor. There's that word again. You're going to hear that word a lot tonight. Let me just go ahead and warn you. So don't be surprised if you wake up at three in the morning. Glory! Good. Hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope you are spontaneously shouting the word glory because you have become aware of the glory that is on you. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Glory and honor are interchangeable in this particular uh, verse. Now, glory in this verse, remember earlier, the first definition of glory was specifically about what the presence of God was. So it was grandeur, imposing in form, and in, in form and appearance, and majestic. This glory definition is, is amazing. Wait. Wait. And I love the next part. There's, there's parts of this definition which speak to splendor or copiousness. Copiousness, abundance, plentiful. This is the glory that every single person in here is crowned with. Wait. Splendor, abundance. That is your crown. That is what God has placed on each and every one of you. That is the weight. I love it because it tells us right from jump, before anything that we can think about trying to do or any place we can think of trying to go or any person we can think about trying to encounter, there is a weight that we have to be mindful of, that we have. Some of us don't know our weight. I don't mean, I mean weight. <laughs> when I used to play uh, basketball when I was younger, I, I, I once heard a term called uh, man strength. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. It's an interesting thing. So you can be on a basketball court and you can be younger than the guy you're playing against. You can be bigger than he is. But if he's older, it's a very interesting thing. Because he's more mature, he knows how to use his weight. So even though you are bigger than that person, and you're faster that, than that person, in my youth, because I was the guy who was younger playing against older guys, I would play against these old guys and, and I couldn't understand why it was they were moving me around and able to do the things they could do, even though I knew that I had the quote unquote physical advantage, they knew how to use their weight. They understood that they carried themselves in a certain way and they had become so experienced in carrying themselves in that, in that, in that way because they had played enough, they'd been through enough situations at that weight 
where now they were experts in that situation at that weight. Whereas me, young in my experience or lack of experience, didn't matter that I had quote unquote more weight or more speed. I was inexperienced in that way, in that particular situation. Family, the biggest challenge we will have in this season, because I will tell you flat out, this is a glory season. I will say it again, this is a glory season. And by glory season, I mean it is the time where you plug into God and say, God, what is my weight? How do I move in this season at this weight? A lot of us move through life not fully aware of the, the weight that we carry and how we carry it. And by weight, think of weight in a sense of significance. I love this because as we talk about how God has crowned us with this glory, he's crowned us with a weight, with a splendor, with, with abundance. That means each one of us walks around with a predetermined splendor. Each one of us walks around with a predetermined abundance that we have yet to lay hold of. I keep using this example because I, want, I, I need this body to understand we gotta walk different. We have to be this glory that we have now that we're aware of it. Can you imagine walking and having a conversation and all you are thinking in your mind is splendor. Splendor. Abundance. Splendor. Abundance. Your speech will change. Splendor. Abundance. Splendor. Ab your plans will change. Your imagination has to grow. You can't have the same goals once you understand that you are predetermined to walk in splendor and abundance according to the God who created the earth, moon, stars, and heavens and still remembered you. You can't, you can't walk the same. Your conversations cannot stay the same. You can't even talk to the same people. Your circle should change. Your crew should change. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean that the people have to come and go. The people can stay, but they can't be the same people. Because if they become under the understanding of the same glory that you have the understanding in for you, then they should be changing and transforming too. Your circle should be evolving in accordance to the understanding and the knowledge that God has placed a glory and a splendor and an abundance abundance on your life and if you are talking to people who don't have that understanding <sighs> you can't allow it I challenge everyone here the next time you're in a conversation that is not contributing to an understanding or furthering of the glory that you carry, do something about it. Words are a powerful thing. And if you allow yourself to stay in conversations that are, while you don't realize it, sapping away at the awareness of the glory that God has over your life, if you find yourself consistently in conversations that are not speaking to build your awareness of that glory, I'm speaking to someone right now. I don't know who, but someone needs to hear this. You have to cut those conversations short. Abruptly. It can be as simple as click. Blame your cell phone company. We do it all the time anyway. 
whatever it takes whatever it takes whatever it takes because in this season in this season in this church the way this 2016 one church is moving in transition and in glory we cannot afford to be held back and out of rhythm and out of step with the forward motion that is taking place. I keep hearing, don't, don't be taken lightly. Don't be taken lightly. Don't allow anyone to take you lightly. How can you, how can you be taken lightly? You have weight. When you know your weight, can't nobody take it lightly. But if we are walking without the awareness of what that significance and what that weight is that God has crowned us with, people will take us any old way. You'll find someone with a lot of weight being treated as if they have no weight at all. We'll find ourselves in situations where we get so accustomed to being treated as if we don't have weight that we start to accept the lie that there is no weight for us to have. When in fact, not only is there a weight for us to have, we already have it. It is ours. And also understand that as the awareness of that glory increases, the glory increases. The weight increases. And that means we have to be even more diligent in searching out God for how to handle the next level of weight that he lays upon us. There was a boxer, his name was Roy Jones Jr. One of the pound for pound greatest boxers of all time. What made him so great was his ability to excel at different weights. He won championships. I can't name all the divisions, but I know he went as high as heavyweight, and at one point he was like a light middleweight. So he just kept winning belts. It didn't matter what weight he was. Once he found a level and a weight, he said, I've conquered it. Next weight. And he would take on all the challengers and knock them out and say, okay, I've mastered this. Next weight. I've knocked this person out. Knock this person out. Next weight. That is the glory to glory that we all have to seek. So our questions need to stop being, what's the next accomplishment? What's the next thing we need to do? What's the next notch on our belt? It needs to be Father. What is the next weight class you need me to get to? How do I need to train? What do I need to do? What do I need to feed my spirit to be able to hold this weight that you're about to put on me on this next level so that I can excel in the way you need me to excel? We have to constantly keep our minds focused on him so that he can reveal what to do at the next weight class, the next glory class the next class of splendor, the next class of abundance, the next portion of his presence that he's going to reveal to us, we have to be that kind of hungry group in order to sustain ourselves in this glory season. At some point in time, you find yourself asking the question, well, what is my weight? And I'm here to tell you there's nothing wrong with asking that question you're supposed to. It's okay. And what I love about God is he covers us even as we are asking the questions. I love that God works that way. Sometimes we think because we don't have the full knowledge of an experience that we are at a deficit. In fact, 
there's something about not having the full knowledge that makes you that much hungrier to get more knowledge. So it's no longer, what don't I have? Oh, now I, woe is me, I don't have this. It's, well, Father, this is, there's something missing here. What is it? We will search for the significance and the weight of who we are in the wrong things, and we have to make sure we don't do that. Some of us search for our glory in social media. My glory is in how many followers I have. My glory is in how many likes I get. My glory is in how many people like my picture. My glory is in where my song went. My glory is in how many people bought my song. That's where my glory is. My glory is in, in all of these achievements. And now we can realize that that's, no. We're shortchanging our own glory. So even as we get to the place where we are seeking, Lord, where, where, start sounding like that baby, where, where? I wish you would get that desperate and ask, where? I'm with that. That will work. I promise you the Lord will answer. Just like he did that baby. See, boom. That baby got his answer and was like, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's still quiet. Eh? He got his answer. I ain't mad at you, baby. Yes, little baby, you asked and received. But even as we're seeking, even as we're asking, the question becomes, where? I want to go to Proverbs 25 and 2. I would love to say, I'm going to say it anyway. This is one of my favorite verses. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. So here we are wondering, where do I find this glory? And this passage tells you flat out, not only is it in God, but there's glory in the search. For my people who are searching for their glory and their significance right now, guess what? You have glory on you. There is glory for that part of the process too. There is no part of alignment with God, of searching in God that does not have the crowning of splendor on you always. The crown never goes anywhere. It's just us remembering that we have it on. And to never set it down for anything or anyone less than the King of Kings. So now we find ourselves in this position where we are using our time with God and what God reveals to us to now assess the weight. Family in the glory season, the questions that you ask God, the questions, the questions that you ask God are crucial. equally as crucial as us listening to the answers in full. Because now it isn't just a blessing that's on the line. It isn't just a wish that's on the line. It's accessibility to the knowledge of our proper weight in this season that's on the line. So with the time we spend with God, Make your questions count. I promise the answers will, but make those questions count. I want to move to Psalms 62 and 7. Now, one of the things I love, 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 love about this passage 
We find King David when he when he speaks this on the run. I'll explain why that's significant. It reads, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Now this is important on so, so many levels. We, in seeking out our significance or our weight, may put it in our titles or our positions. David was a king. David was also a father. If he were to have placed his knowledge of his glory based on his current circumstance, oh my God, he would feel like he had no glory at all. Because when we find David in this passage in scripture, David is on the run from his kingdom. He is a king walking in the opposite direction of that which God has given him and said is his. He is a father, an estranged father, whose son is the reason that he's on the run. It's in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 15, if you want to get the whole background on the story. But he finds himself having to leave his kingdom because his son has taken corners of his kingdom and marshaled them together and started a revolt. So here is King David with no kingdom, a father nowhere near his children. In fact, his children, his child anyway, is trying to kill him. Now imagine if David had placed his knowledge of his weight, his knowledge of his significance in his titles in this situation, gets him nowhere. In God is my salvation and my glory. Regardless of the circumstances that were around him, regardless of the titles that he held, in God is my salvation and my glory. When we started in worship earlier this evening, and the presence and the glory of God fell, it was because we did it through worship. And the worship of placing God exactly where he's supposed to be, above in the heavens, that worship is what allows us to have access to the glory. And it's a glory that allows us to be in whatever season and never lose track of the glory. I don't have to go to my boss at my job to understand my weight and significance and my glory. I don't get that from my boss. I don't get my glory or weight or significance from plaques on my wall or commendations or awards. I don't get it from that. Because if all those things are taken away from me, then there goes my quote unquote glory. I love this because David is on the run and in the wilderness. I promise you there's nothing glorious about this situation in his mind. And yet he still knew in the midst of it, in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. This glory season encapsulated right there. No matter what is happening in this season, we always have to know where our salvation is, where our rock is, where our strength is. And that knowledge is what allows us to properly walk with our weight. That allows us to walk in the awareness of splendor and abundance, even when we don't see the splendor and abundance around us, it is still within us. It is still upon us. The glory is on 
you. So now that we know that the glory is on us, so now it's on us. Family, you've had enough word. I don't know who that was for, but please receive that. You've had enough word. You have prayed that same prayer enough times. You have received the same answer enough times. You have not listened to that answer enough times. You have ignored the prayer closet enough times. We have been scared to ask the question enough times. This glory season has no room, no room to be afraid to receive and own his glory because it is ours. Because as he was creating everything beyond our imaginations, he took the time to remember us and give it to us. So now it is on us to live like it, to walk like it, to breathe like it, to speak like it. It's on us to be the glory. And God wouldn't put anything on us that we weren't capable of handling. Anytime the weight of the awareness of God's glory tends, starts to sag those shoulders a little bit, let me remind you, it wouldn't be there if you couldn't handle it. It wouldn't be there if you couldn't handle it. That victory is already done. So for whoever this is for, if you need to, you know, rearrange yourself a little bit, if you need to change your posture and get your alignment in order to carry the glory that God has put on you, do what you need to do. Because it's yours. I love the idea that God has trusted us with this. How precious is that? How amazing is that? Limited and flawed, crazy as we can be. And yet he says, you're worthy of that glory. And I trust that the outcome of that glory in your hands is going to be according to what I planned for you. That should embolden someone. That should strengthen someone. That should get somebody ready to run out of here and take over the world that God has given them. Come on. Be the glory. That's my challenge. I've had a, quite a few, but I'll throw this last one out for everyone. And Every challenge I throw out there, I promise, I'm catching it too. Let's be the glory. And let's be the glory not only for ourselves and not only so that we can receive something, so that we can receive the manifest of the blessings of God. That's great. But there are people who will never set foot in a church. There are people who, for whatever reasons, have a standoffishness to the word of God. And they're going to look to you in some way, shape, or form. You have no idea how. You probably are, I wouldn't even say probably, you are already being looked upon as it is right now. Be very shocked and amazed who's watching you right now. And just observing and saying, huh. 
So that's how this Jesus thing works. Huh. Okay. Maybe I need to get a little closer to that. That's one of the biggest responsibilities of the glory season, of carrying the weight, is understanding that ultimately the weight is not only for us. There's a much greater purpose and call for everybody accepting the glory that God has placed on our lives. There's a greater blessing beyond what we can imagine for ourselves. So if everyone here, everyone receiving this on live stream who's going to check this out on YouTube or see a clip on Instagram, everybody, be that glory. It's in you and it's on you. Let's stand. <laughs> Family, one of the most empowering things about glory, because it is on you, is it means those first steps toward glory need to be taken by you. I'm going to call a few groups of people up. If you have felt like you haven't fully understood the glory that God has placed upon you, if you feel like you just have not been able to fully lay hold of how much glory God has for you, and how much glory God plans to pour through you. Please come forward. Okay. Wow, praise God, praise God. Come get this glory, come get it, come get it, come get it, come get it. Come get this glory, come get it. Come get what is rightfully yours. Come get it. Come get it. Come on. Second group of people. In order to begin to, to, to approach receiving this glory, there's a relationship with God that must be built. And it's a relationship built step by step it's built brick by brick and if today tonight you have not taken that step if you know that there is a weight upon you that you have not taken the step forward to accept if you know in your heart in your spirit you haven't fully embraced an intimate relationship with God. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. have a heart for people who are coming forward for that first time because I was that guy. I was him. And I know how you feel. I know what is trying to get you to not come forward in your mind. I promise you, you need to ignore that thing right now because there's glory to be had and your name is on it. Come get it. Come get it. Come take those first steps towards a relationship with God that opens your eyes to the glory he's placed on your life. Come on. Oh, wonderful. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Yes.
thank you for that bravery and that courage. If you have a heart to be down here, you haven't made your way, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Father, tonight is a night where you have allowed the glory of your presence to settle. Not just to come and go, but to settle. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we seal the awareness of your glory. We seal the growing of the awareness of your glory. We seal in our hearts the hunger to continue to chase after that which you have placed upon us to have, Lord God. We seal it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we seal the anointing of searching out of matter. I feel this so strong. We're not afraid to search out matters anymore, family. We're not afraid to search out matters, God. The very things that have plagued our hearts, Lord God, that we've been afraid to ask you because we've been afraid to get the answers, because we've been afraid of the responsibility of what to do with the answers that you've given us, we drive that fear out right now in the name of Jesus. this glory season, the anointing on searching. Let the anointing for searching you out for every and all things. Father, let us only use you to assess our weight, to assess our glory. Let us only use you, Father God. Every other option, we drive it out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for enlarging and opening your arms to us so that you can receive us. Thank you, Father, for receiving us as, as, as our most flawed and most vulnerable and most afraid to ask every state that we've been in, Father God, and yet you receive us anyway and you bless us with the crowning of the glory. Thank you, Father. Let no one leave this space. Let no one leave this experience, whether you are experiencing this, on, experiencing this on live stream or any other medium. Father, let no one leave this without the permanent seal of the crown, Jesus. Let the permanent seal of the crown of glory rest upon every single person. Let tonight, Lord God, be the night that we unlock the next great class. Let tonight be the night that we receive the training manual for how to get our weight up, how to get our glory up. Whatever spiritual exercises you need us to do so that we can operate in excellence at this class and the next weight class, Father, we receive that right now in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father God. We acknowledge your mark on us. Thank you, Father God, for your mark. Thank you for marking us to be remembered. Amidst all of the chaos, amidst all of the mystery, amidst all of the grandeur and the glory that comes with your presence, and yet, Lord God, you marked us to be remembered and to be crowned. Thank you, God. I pray, Father God, that eyes have been opened that our mark will be recognized by the universe that our speech will be in accordance to our mark that our walk will be in accordance to our mark that our thoughts will be in accordance to our mark that our lives will be in accordance to our mark 
Let every move we make be in accordance to the mark of remembrance that you've placed upon us. Father, today the words honor and glory mean something brand new. They're no longer just words that we throw out in the midst of just saying them in religious spaces. Father, honor and glory from this night forward is who we are. We are honor. We are glory. We are honor. We are glory in accordance with the power of Jesus. We will be honor and glory. We seal the glory of your presence within us and around us because it is now on us. In Jesus' name, amen.